people marched the streets of London to commemorate the 36th anniversary of an uprising by Tibetans against the Chinese. But the uprising failed, and Tibet continues to be illegally occupied, despite unanimous condemnation from Western nations. Even the UN has agreed that Tibetans do have a right to self-determination. The march was led by Palden Gyatso, a Tibetan monk who had spent 33 years in Chinese prisons before escaping to the West. His only crime was to have been caught distributing leaflets demanding that the Chinese leave his country. Palden Gyatso delivered a letter to the office of the British Prime Minister. But he, like many Tibetans, is worried that such gestures continue to be ignored. The letter described Tibet as a vast prison camp where anyone speaking out against the ruling Chinese regime is ruthlessly silenced. At a press conference, Palden Gyatso described how Chinese suppression worked and showed the torture instruments he smuggled out of Tibet with him. The Chinese didn't regard us Tibetans and prisoners as human beings. They use these horrendous instruments of torture on people. These self-tightening thumb cuffs and these handcuffs have been routinely used to restrain prisoners and they've been left on for long periods. I had this electric baton put in my mouth. I've known female prisoners have it put in their vagina. As a result of this torture, as you see, I have no teeth left. Some teeth broke and some fell out because of pus and ulcers. Kathmandu, Nepal. It is just across the border to the south of Tibet and is a refuge for Tibetans fleeing Chinese repression. This is a UN center for those refugees. A group of young people has just escaped from Tibet. All suffered severe frostbite as a result of crossing the Himalayas at the height of winter. They crossed one of the world's highest passes without adequate food or clothing and did so at the coldest time of year to avoid Chinese border patrols. Gyelgi, an 18-year-old monk, fled Tibet because of the new religious clampdown. Before, we were 100 in my monastery. Now they say only 30 monks can practice there. The Chinese have made so much trouble, and so I had to leave. Gyelgi has suffered frostbite and lost some of his toes. I would like to return to Tibet, but only if my country is free. In Tibet's capital, Lhasa, the Chinese continue to persecute Tibetans and undermine their national identity. As Tibet's intellectuals, nuns and monks are at the forefront of the resistance against the Chinese. These nuns are not only collecting money for food, they also need to rebuild their monastery, destroyed by the Chinese in the 1960s. Once a thriving educational and cultural center, Ganden Monastery was devastated by massive artillery fire. There used to be over 5,000 monks resident here. Now, only about 200 part-time monks are left to try to put the monastery back together again. It is being rebuilt in the monks' spare time and with donations from the local community. But new laws brought in in March mean that most of these monks will soon be expelled. By 1979, out of an original 6,000 monasteries in Tibet, only 13 remained. Ever since their arrival in 1950, the Chinese have been trying to wipe out all aspects of Tibetan identity, hitting at the very heart of their culture, religion. Tibetans practice the traditions they are still allowed under the Chinese. These pilgrims have come from all corners of a country the size of Western Europe to worship at Tibet's holiest site. But in the square in front of the temple, there is always a heavy police presence. These camera-shy policemen are guarding the site of the bloody 1988 and 1989 clashes when many Tibetans died in a brutal police put-down. According to Amnesty International, there are around 650 political prisoners held in prisons throughout Tibet. The square is now kept clear and anyone sitting down is immediately moved on. Tibetans always move around the sacred Jokang temple in a clockwise direction, but this military truck is deliberately going against the Tibetan flow. 
It is a show of strength which is highly offensive to this deeply religious people. Surveillance cameras watch over the Tibetan part of town. No Tibetan can speak openly to a foreigner, and to talk to a journalist about the political situation would risk imprisonment and torture. This new statue represents the Chinese ascent of Everest. It is a popular spot amongst Chinese tourists and a favorite for military personnel. The Chinese hope that by replacing Tibetan monuments with Chinese ones, the city's character will be transformed. In these brand new shopping malls, businesses are run by and for the Chinese newcomers who now outnumber Tibetans in their own capital city. Most Tibetans live outside the mainstream economy, which is run by well-connected Chinese entrepreneurs. Karaoke bars are springing up all over the city. The clientele is overwhelmingly Chinese. With entrance fees and drinks costing over $3 each, this is a form of entertainment few Tibetans can afford. Unable to compete in the dominant economy, many local women are becoming prostitutes. These brothels are flourishing with clients from Lhasa's numerous military bases. As the number of unemployed Tibetans continues to rise, many spend their days in TV parlors like these. They show violent Chinese films, which are out of keeping with a culture based on pacifist ideals. With such rapid economic and cultural changes, it is not surprising that alcoholism and violent attacks are on the rise, making Lhasa a powder keg ready to explode. The Patala Palace, former home of the Dalai Lama, is one of the few Tibetan buildings that will remain. It has been turned into a museum, and Tibetans must pay to visit the sacred building. The Dalai Lama is not only a political leader to Tibetans, he represents the Buddha incarnate. Everywhere you go in Tibet, Tibetans of all ages ask for a picture of their god king. For Tibetans who do want to criticize the ruling regime, there are few opportunities to do so. These rare pictures show an independence leaflet. It demands that the Chinese leave Tibet to Tibetans. Whoever placed it here risked serious punishment. Resistance in Lhasa remains peaceful but strong. This man sings in praise of the Dalai Lama. Tibetans have faith in him, he sings. May he return to Tibet. But until the West makes a stand, the situation is unlikely to improve. China is a huge emerging market which industrialized countries want to exploit. Are the atrocities in Tibet the price we are prepared to pay? Are the atrocities being carried out in Tibet?